in a one horse open sleigh. Louder. Or the hill we go. Laughing all the way. Bells on Bob Tillery. Making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing. Playing song tonight. Oh, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Jingle bell, jingle bell. Jingle all the way, say, oh, what fun it is to ride one horse open sleigh. That was pretty. All right. Hey, look, now you got to be here next Sunday because we're starting out the new year. Everybody got to start out the new year right, right? In church. We're going to have everybody who read their Bible through next, up, up next week recognizing them, all that good stuff. So uh, you got a week to finish that's all right. all right. We're going to give y'all a big old hand, and you're going to go back there, and Brother Joey's going to preach the devil out of you. And then, and we're going to have a service in here, okay? All right. Let's give him a big hand this morning. Y'all go ahead. Go back to Jesus. Amen. 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 You better tell your brother he better get here. Play, please. Amen. While they're finishing up there now, a uh, couple of things right quick. We're going to get right into the message today and uh, let you go. I know uh, many of you uh, uh, have places to go, family and friends. I understand that, and we're going to hurry and uh, get right into the message this morning. Uh, right quick, while they're getting everybody out, uh, is that baby back there, Karen? Uh, that little baby we've been praying for for a few weeks, just got born, he is here today, a little Sawyer. Amen. Amen. Stand him up back there, Courtney. Let's give him a big hand. He was in bad shape there for a while. <laughs> Amen. And today's his first day at church. Praise the Lord. That's good. Uh, also, I did mention that about next, next Sunday morning. First day of the new year. Make a new, fresh start. Sunday school, preaching, Sunday evening. Start all over again, fresh and new. It don't hurt to start out all over again once in a while. I'm glad, I'm glad God makes new weeks, new months, new year. You sort of just, it's like, you wouldn't have you want to play the whole ball game forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm glad it's over and you can play another and try to do better next time. That's, that's the way your calendar is. So be here next Sunday morning. The bus will leave at 2 o'clock Tuesday for winter camp. We are going to winter camp uh, this Tuesday. We are so excited about it. We're going to have preaching every morning, every night. And if you're not signed up by now, you're going to get probably left behind. So uh, uh, be here. You should have one of those sheets that tells you what to bring, what you can wear, what you can't wear, what you can do, what you can't do, about money, stuff like that. It's all free, but you'll need a little spending money for eating out a couple of times. Uh, we're going to have a great time. We'll leave here tomorrow, I mean Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Take your Bible turn to Matthew chapter 2, please. Matthew chapter 2. The Christmas story is found in Matthew 2, also in Luke chapter 2. And uh, uh, we'd like for you to look at it this morning. Once again, thank you for this really, really big crowd of people here on Christmas Day. What a blessing. What a blessing. Two or three people said, nobody ain't going to come on Christmas and you know who that, remember I preached on who speaks through people? It wasn't the Lord speaking through that person. Luke, uh, Luke chapter 2 is the Christmas story, Matthew chapter 2. So we'll look at Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. Now when Jesus was born, that's the word I'm going to focus on this morning, born. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, 
there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. I wonder why I call it his star. Why not a star? He is a special He owned them all anyway. In the east, and are come to worship him. I want to preach to you just a few minutes this morning on the subject, why was Jesus born? The Bible said in that verse, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. This morning, I want you to think about the thought. Down just a hair, brother. Uh, why was Jesus born? The birth of Jesus Christ was a lot more than just a sweet little baby story of little little animals and sheep and cows and, and you know, like this lovely little scene like they make it look like on, in the plays and on the movies. It really wasn't that at all. It was a dirty, cold, stinking stable. Nasty animals. And the reason he was born there, there was no room for them in the end, for Mary and Joseph. That's been typical ever since then. People don't seem to have room for him. It's funny, we got room for everything else, isn't it? Everything else we want to do, we'll make room for. But the Lord seems to get pushed out a lot of time. What does the Bible say about why Jesus was born? I want to say a few things about it this morning. And the first thing I want to say is why he was born, number one, to fulfill the Scriptures, to fulfill the Scriptures. I don't think most people realize how important it is that God put the emphasis on Scripture must be fulfilled. The Lord said that one time. He said the Scriptures must be fulfilled. Matter of fact, one way or one of the surest ways you know the Bible is true is it has the ability to predict the future and get it right on the money every single time. Think about that now as I go over some of these scriptures. Back in, in Isaiah's day, Isaiah 7 and verse 14, Isaiah wrote, A virgin shall conceive. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 700 years before it ever happened. 700 years, Isaiah was writing and said, A virgin shall conceive. Don't you know people thought that was crazy? They said, a virgin can't have a child? That's impossible. See there, the Bible's just an old book of just myths and fairy tales. You can't take it literally. It said a virgin would conceive. Well, guess what? A virgin did conceive. Mary was a virgin. And one man said, uh, well, it's impossible. A woman can't have a child without the aid, physical aid of a man. She can't have a child without a father. And somebody else said, well, that's nothing. Adam and Eve didn't have a mother or a father. I mean, God just said, bam, made Adam out of the dust of the ground and made Eve out of his side and rib, literally. And so the Scripture was fulfilled. What if somebody wrote something back in, uh, let's say, 1400 or 1300 and something, and, so, and we are still looking for it to be fulfilled now? Because that's crazy. It was wrote back in 1300, and bam, it happens today. That's what happened. A virgin, ladies and gentlemen, did conceive. Now you think about that. That had never happened before. It has never happened since. Right then. Not only did he say that. The Bible said he would be conceived of the Holy Ghost. So that means Jesus Christ was not a new person created, as Jehovah Witnesses teach. He was a preexistent person incarnated. What does that mean? That means he was God in heaven and God became flesh and dwelt among us. Now CNN and ABC and, 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 and Oprah and, uh, and, and Bill O'Reilly and Don Lemon and all, uh, oh, Jake Tapper and Brooke Baldwin and, and that old gray-headed ugly guy, uh, the real, real funny one, uh, What's his name? Cooper. Anderson Cooper. I mean, them guys, I mean, they couldn't touch that with a 30-foot pole. They'll never put on there and say, a virgin conceived he was God in the flesh. But the Bible said in 1 Timothy that God was manifest in flesh. I said God was manifest in flesh. I said, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was no ordinary baby. This was no ordinary birth. 
Jesus was born to fulfill that scripture. The Bible said back in Deuteronomy, God told Moses, he said, a prophet shall the Lord God raise up unto you like unto me. That was a prophecy in Moses' day. In Isaiah 53, he said he would be wounded for our transgression. He would be bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. That was 700 years before he ever showed up. The Bible said he would be betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. Bang! Nail on the head. Not 29, not 34, 30 pieces of silver. Bang! Right on the button. The Bible said that he'd be born in Bethlehem. Now think about that. Micah the prophet said that Jesus the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. You say, what's the big deal about that? I'll tell you what the big deal is. At that time, there were three known continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa, uh, the Far East, near, near and Far East. And of those three continents, uh, Asia was chosen. James from the continent of Asia. That's Israel uh, in, that, in that area. Asia has many countries. Palestine was chosen. Palestine had three districts, Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. Judea was chosen. And Judea had many villages and cities, and Bethlehem was chosen. Out of all the thousand, though thou be little among the thousands, the prophet said, out of thee shall come he, that's the rule of my people. Listen, it said when he'd be born, it said his mama's going to be a virgin. Daniel even told the time to the very day when he would come into town. It'd be like a map of the United States up there on that wall and me taking a dart and slinging it backwards and hitting Nebo, just like that. You say, well, that never happened. That's how accurate those prophets were. They told the town. They told the time. They told, you know why Jesus showed up? He showed up to fulfill the scriptures. Back when I was young, they, that Jesus Christ superstar, that rock opera came out, and I wasn't even saved, and that thing made me feel, I didn't like it. I didn't want to listen to it. I felt weird about it, and I remember as a young kid, I remember hearing that song, and it was saying, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who are you? What did you sacrifice? And it said, why did you come at such a backward time and such a strange place? And I'm telling you, I remember thinking, what, what, what's wrong with these people? They're a bunch of hippies. Can't they just sing about having fun and instead of messing with that? And after I got saved, I began to realize what they were doing, and they were questioning why I was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And I'll tell you why. He did it to fulfill them scriptures. Them Old Testament scriptures said, this is when, this is how, this is where, and bang, every single one of them to the T, 100%. Jesus was born, ladies and gentlemen, to fulfill the scriptures. And there's a bunch more. I, I won't take time to go into this morning. Number two, Jesus was born, secondly this morning, to reveal the Father. He was born to reveal the Father. For thousands of years, men have said, is there a God? I wonder what he's like. How do we even know what God's like? Maybe God's your imagination. Maybe God's a tree. Maybe God's a mountain. What is God? Jesus Christ came and said, here he is. This is God. He was God in flesh. Now, as I explained Wednesday night, he was the God-man. He was not a new person created. He was a preexistent person incarnated. That means he always was and took a body at Bethlehem and lived 33 and a half years as a man. But he was God. You say, well, I thought you said he was a man. He was a man. You say, I thought you said he was God. He was God. He's the God man. He was all God and all man. He was not half God and half man. He was all God and all man. And you can't understand that. You accept that by faith. We, nobody can understand that. It's a mystery of the incarnation. God manifests in flesh. For you see, as a man, he went to sleep on the boat. That shows his manhood. But as God, he stood up and said, Peace be still, and the waves laid down. As a man, he cried at the graves of Lazarus. But as God, he said, Lazarus, get up. And he come up out of that grave. See, he was God and man. He felt everything just like me and you would feel. He felt pain just like I. If you, when they put those nails in his hands, he felt it just like you would feel it. 
He, he did not use his supernatural power to relieve himself of pain. He did not use his miracle working power to ease the pain of the cross. Brother, he felt those nails through his hands and feet just like you and me would have felt them if it would have happened to us. God became man. God became man. That's God, brother, and that's man. See him weeping over Jerusalem? That's, that's, the, that's a man and God weeping over his people and a family. Years ago, back in 1775, there's this great fancy hotel up in Baltimore, Maryland. Big fancy for big shots only. And this old man come in there one day. He wanted a room, and he's all dressed like he's dirty and had old farm clothes on. And the owner said, sorry, we have no room for you. And would not, they had rooms. He wouldn't give it to him. He said, I don't want that type of people staying in my nice motel. Well, they got a call about a letter that a few days later that said that was the vice president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. And he was passing through and went in to get a room and was refused. And immediately they said, oh, my goodness, oh, no. And they wrote him a letter and said, dear sir, please forgive us. We had no idea you was the vice president. If we had known who you were, we would have made room for you. And Thomas Jefferson wrote him back and said, if you don't have room for a dirty American farmer, you ain't got room for the vice president. That was back when politicians had some some qualities about him, you know, besides just lying. And, uh, and, uh, he, and buddy, I'm telling you what, he said, you ain't got room for an old farmer, you don't have room for me. And ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, he had no form or comeliness, he wasn't a movie star, he wasn't super built, muscle, handsome, all that kind of, the Bible said there was nothing about him that we would see as attractive, he, he rode a, 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 a borrowed horse, he had nowhere to lay his head, he did didn't own a lot of things. He didn't own them. And people say, we don't want that. We don't want that. And nailed him to a cross. And one day God's going to say, that was my son. And they'll say, well, if we'd have knew you, it was you, Lord, we'd have never done that. But I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that's who he was. He came to reveal the Father. He came to reveal the Father. Thank God he stepped out of heaven and revealed the Father to us. You know what? They said this guy, his family is sitting one time and their daddy had been killed in the, in the army in the war, and they had a family picture up there, my mom and dad and all the kids, and it was Christmas, and they were sitting down there, and they was all sad, and the little boy was looking down like that, and they said, son, what do you want for Christmas? If you could have anything, what would you want? And he said, I wish my daddy would step out of that picture and come down here and be with us and have Christmas with us. And you know what? That couldn't happen, and it didn't happen. But that is exactly what happened when Jesus came to this earth. God stepped out of heaven and came down in the form of a baby. That way you can't say, well, you don't know what it's like. You don't have to do it. He knows exactly what it's like. He goes through everything you go through. He's tempted just like you're tempted. He's got the same problems you've got. He's got the same uh, temptation. He knows what you face. He knows what I face. And thank God he did it all without sinning and made a way so me and you could get saved and go to heaven. He came to reveal the Father. Number three. Now what did I say? Number one, he came to fulfill the Scripture. Number two, he came to reveal the Father. Number three, he came to defeat Satan. See, the devil, the devil was an old champ. He knocked out everybody that got in the ring with him until this one showed up. Amen? Now, I preached a sermon one time, and I go through a whole boxing match, and I'm not, I'm not a boxer. I mean, I ain't stupid. I'm too little. Uh, 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 but I, I got an equalizer. Uh, but uh, I don't have it with me right now. Uh, but I've got something to make it even. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I was just saying, I was like this, like this fighter, this boxer. And boy, the devil was the reigning champ. Adam and Eve got in the ring. Bam! They sinned. Here come Cain and Abel. Bam! Knock them out. Here come the days before the flood. Bam! Knock them out. Here come uh, uh, Elijah. Bam! Knock them out. Here come David. Bam! He committed adultery. Here come Noah. Bam! He got drunk. Uh, here come Moses. Bam! He killed somebody. The reigning champ had knocked out everybody. I mean, he'd had like uh, 100 million knockouts uh, by, by knockout, undefeated, undisputed champion of the world. And one day one showed up like this. I've been out in the wilderness, had 40 days and 40 nights, and not ate a bite, and 
stepped into the ring and all the devil's angels were saying, let's get him, champ. Let's get him. I've heard about him. They were bragging on him down there the other day. Punch him out. And the Lord Jesus come up like that and the devil said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Bam! and hit him like that right there and our angels looked on and demons looked on and the, the challenger stood up there and said uh, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that feedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live Bow! hit the devil knocked him sideways and the devil said good night I ain't never been hit like that I thought some of them Old Testament guys was tough I mean Samson and all them ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho he caught me off guard there fellas I'll get him you can get him champ you can get him go get him go get him you can do it you can do it so the devil said, all right, all right. I can quote Scripture too. Uh, he said, if you're the Son of God, if you're the Son of God, uh, then, uh, then throw yourself off of this, this, this mountain here. It is written. I can do it too, right? Don't ever forget that. The devil quotes Scripture too, people. And the devil said, uh, uh, if you're the Son of God, throw yourself off here. It is written, he'll give his angels charge concerning you, and they'll catch you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You're not going to get hurt. And the Lord reached back there and pulled out another verse out of Deuteronomy and said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, bam, and hit him with a left hook. That's the way, it, if I wrote the movie, that's the way it would be. I mean, the, movie, the music would start playing, and the drums would start rolling, and all the angels of heaven would get up here, and they're and everybody say, oh, what's going to happen now? What's going to happen now? And the devil comes down and says, all right, I'm throwing my best punch. And I'll offer him all the kingdoms of the world. Everybody take this. That's why them big movie stars, that's why them athletes, all they got to do is offer them money. They'll, they'll give in. And he said, all the kingdoms of the world will I give you if you'll just bow down and worship me. One time, bow your knee, worship me. And the pressure of every demon in hell was on the Son of God. He hadn't made a bite in 40 days and 40 nights. All hell was against him. Me and you would have fell a long time ago. I'm glad my, my hero, my savior, my big time friend stood up there that day and said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Bow. And he went rolling off down the hill somewhere. You getting all this, sister? <laughs> You're good if you get all this. And I mean, I mean, he was going down through there and everything, and he rolled down the hill, and the Bible said, the devil leaveth him. He had to I tell it out in the country somewhere. And they come around and said, that a boy champ, that a boy champ, held up his arms, and God the Father went, amen, that's my son down there. And victory was won. He come to defeat the devil. And I'm glad that he did. Amen. They said years ago, there's somebody's, old, somebody's having a fight like the, like the um, people at West Virginia. My kinfolks, uh, Hatfields and McCoys. My kinfolks live in the Hatfields, near the Hatfields, mixed, I don't know. My cousin got a couple little Hatfield kids. And uh, uh, they, uh, they like Hatfield and McCoy, they fighting. And they had their shotguns out like that, and they're going, bam, bam, trying to shoot their cows and dogs and kids and everything else, grandma and papa, and there's a firing back and forth, and they said a little baby got out of the house, and this little baby went crawling up through there like that, right in the middle of that, and somebody hollered, cease fire, the baby, and both sides laid their guns down, so somebody could go out there, and that little baby crawled right out there in the middle of that thing, and maybe that's why Jesus was born, this old world's in bad shape, and bad turmoil, still is this morning. I'm telling one little baby, come out one time. Well, lay, down, lay, lay down their arms, quit fighting, get right with God, trust the Lord, and do the right. The Lord will make you sweet. He'll make you easy to get along with. You know somebody's hard to get along with? You know they need to get right with the Lord. Quit looking at him. He knows who he, that you know it's him uh, 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 and her. Uh, but listen, I'm telling you, <laughs> I Got a bunch of grouches in here. I can tell that. Scrooge come to church this morning. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you something, brother. The Lord will make you sweet. You don't make just self-righteous and holy. He'll make you nice to people. He come to defeat the devil. Lastly, and I'm through. Number four. What did I say? Number one, he come to fulfill the Scripture. Number two, he come to reveal the Father. Number three, he come to defeat the devil. Number four, he come to save sinners. 
There's where you can shout right there. He come to save sinners. Is there any sinners here today? He come for you. One lady said, I'm not a sinner. Well, I hate to tell you, sister, but there's no hope for you. There's no hope for you if you're not a sinner. He only come to save sinners. He only come. No hope for you good people don't ever do nothing wrong. You're, you're hopeless. Uh, there's, you, you're done over the edge and no hope for you. The only way you can get help from God is say, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And the night I got saved, I was 18 years old. I fell down on my face at Lebo Baptist Church and said, God, I'm sorry. I've sinned. Oh, God. You want help from God this morning? Admit you're a sinner. Admit you're a sinner. You are. You are one. Admit it. Don't walk around like you're something special. I mean, Lord, if you didn't take a bath a few days, nobody couldn't stand to be around you. Just junk comes out of you. How come, feet, how come food smells good when it goes in, stinks with your breath, now when it comes out? Well, you had a hold of it. You're a sinner. You mess up everything you touch. I mean, you listen, you, you go from bad to worse. And this world has an effect on you. I'm telling you, come to save sinners. Bible said, Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 15, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. I love 1 Timothy 1.15. said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I'm glad he came to save sinners. The Son of God become a Son of Man so that sons of men could become sons of God. He left heaven and came down here so we can leave here and go up there. He became in the likeness of sinful flesh so that sinful flesh can be up there where he is. Holy, we come down here and came down and we're sin, so that we're here in sin can go up there where it's holy. Deity took on humanity, that humanity would one day take on deity. He took our place, we swapped. He came down here so we could go up there. That's why he was born. Say sinners. First John 3 and verse 5 said, He come to save sinners. You say, preacher, my thoughts are bad. I have an evil mind, and I think wicked stuff all the time. I got news for you this morning. He said, I'll cast my sin, your sins behind my back. He'll forgive you and cleanse your mind. You say, preacher, I got a drinking problem or a drug problem. I'm just an evil person. I'm full of sin. I got news for you. He come to forgive you of your sin. You say, brother... Preacher, I've, I've done wrong to my wife. I've treated my wife wrong and I've, I've cheated or I've done my husband or I've cheated. He come to forgive you. He'll forgive you. He come to save sinners. I don't care what you've done this morning. He can forgive you right here on this altar today, people. Right here. You think we've done all this just because we're bored? we done this so we could have tell you the good news that he loves you and he'll forgive you right here this morning. The biggest, greatest, best Christmas gift you could ever get would be to get saved on Christmas Day. My, my, my. I got saved on Wednesday night, April the 18th, 19th. And uh, I, I wouldn't trade nothing in the world for it. But if I could pick a day out of the year that I was going to get saved on, it would be Christmas Day. <whistles> Years ago, there's an old man, mean as a devil, and they called him Old Bill. Old Bill had one of his eyes put out in his bootlegger. He used to make moonshine and liquor and, and uh, live like the devil. Somebody come one time and told him, the same story that I'm telling you. And old Bill believed it, and got down and asked the Lord to save him, and a complete change come over his life. They even He worked at a rescue mission in Evansville, Indiana, and they started calling him New Bill. New Bill. Just like Paul, old apostle Paul, was Saul. Then Paul, listen, God changes some people so much, people start even calling them something different. They call, they call me a lot of things. Before and after I say. But everybody knows one thing. Old Danny ain't the same as that old Danny that used to be back there. He come to save sinners, people. 
That's the best news you've ever heard. You don't have to leave this church this morning wondering if you're going to go to heaven when you die. You can settle it right here today. Remember reading about Father Chaniki? Chaniki, I read books about that thing. That was a long time ago. I read that book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome. An amazing story. He was a Roman Catholic priest for, I think, 35 years and, and was starts a pastor, whatever they are. Uh, uh, he was the priest or the bishop over a big, huge church up near Chicago. And it started bothering him that Catholic traditions, twiddling beads, reciting prayers, lighting candles, wasn't doing nothing for him. And somebody showed him the truth in the Scripture that Jesus Christ died for him on the cross and he could be saved just by accepting that gift. You know, like these kids are going to get this gift. God has a gift. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not through a church, not through a preacher, not through the Baptist, not through the man, but through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father Chaniki stayed up all night one night reading the Scripture, and he saw it. And he got down on his knees, and he asked the Lord to save him. And the Lord come into his heart and changed him. And he stood in front of a thousand people the next morning at that big Catholic church and said, People... I've been wrong for 35 years. Last night, I found the gift, and I accepted it, and I loved the giver. And they said 900 people followed his footsteps. And that, that's a Presbyterian church there today because of one man that said, I know why Jesus came. He came to save sinners. He didn't come to make you religious. He didn't come... He didn't come to make you a better person in the community. He came to make you a sinner, a saved by grace of God, and that's why the Lord came to this earth. That's why he was born. What God did for Brother Chaniki, what God did for old Bill, he can do for you this morning. There's a man called um, Colonel Sanders. I think about him often. Oh, old, old Colonel Sanders, Lord, he's fed enough preachers to... If anybody could get to heaven without getting saved, it'd be him feeding all the preachers for a thousand years. They said a preacher's belt wasn't nothing but a fence around a chicken graveyard. Anyway, that's all they used to feed them. And one time the preacher lost his false teeth and they couldn't find them. They fell down in the well, at the bottom of the well, and they couldn't get them out. And they, so they just put a chicken on a rope and lowered it down there and they went, <coughs> got on my head. <laughs> but anyway, old Colonel Sanders, you know what he done? He gave money. They said he couldn't find peace. He's 79 years old, and he couldn't find peace. He was even given a tenth of his income, and he said, I still don't feel no better. He's giving it what he's supposed to, and it wasn't doing nothing. You know why? Because that don't save you. He started going to church, giving to charity, and everything couldn't get no peace. And finally, somebody got him and told him just what I'm telling you this morning. And old Colonel Sanders, 79 years old, asked the Lord to save him, come in his heart. And he said, you know what he said? He said, I knew that I was a new man. He's in heaven right now. That old boy's in heaven. I, I heard a man talk not long ago that went to church with him up there in, there in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm telling you this morning, he accepted the gift. And that's what you've got to do this morning. We're going to give these gifts out now in just a minute. But God has a bigger gift than this that he wants to give you this morning. The Bible said the gift of God's eternal life. Imagine a big old giant hand coming out of the sky and it's got a big old present with your name on it. And he said, all you've got to do is receive it. If I'm going to give Jimmy a gift, all I've got to do is just hand it to him. All he's got to do is take it. That's what you've got to do to get saved. Take it. Okay? Let's stand by our head for prayer. Why was Jesus born? Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're not going to sing. We're just going to remain in prayer just for a minute. Christians, pray, please. Please pray. We're hoping a bunch of coming to the Lord back in the junior church. I want to ask you this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's moving. God's speaking to your heart. 
God's speaking to your heart right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's someone here this morning that say, Pastor, that spoke to my heart this morning. And I, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want Jesus in my heart. And I'm not sure I'm saved or either. I don't know. Or I do know that I'm not saved. Anyway, please pray for me. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Ain't going, nobody going to bother you. Ain't nobody going to come to you. Ain't nobody going to try to twist your arm. We would like to pray for you this morning. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Slip up your hand. Take it right back down. Slip up your hand. Take it right back down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I see your hand. God bless you. Hands all over the building. Several. Several this morning. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just say, preacher, pray for me. I see your hand back there. Thank you. Anybody else? Slip it up. Take it right back down. Preacher, I want to be remembered. Yes, I see your hand. At least seven, eight, nine hands going up here this morning. Can I ask you a question? Why don't you just settle it today? Settle it today. Everybody in the Bible Jesus called, he called them publicly. Come. He said, come to me. Somebody be here to pray with you. If you'll make that next step and just step right out of your seat, come down, people are praying, nobody's looking. Why don't you just settle this thing on Christmas morning? Come on right now. Come on, just get out of your seat. Come on, ma'am. Come on. You lifted your hand, sir. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Here comes another one. Here comes another one.